Hello and welcome back and that is right today we want to discuss the difference between ECC or error correcting code memory and on die ECC that is the protection system built into DDR5 and in the last six to 12 months whenever I've been talking about pre-built NAS solutions or converting workstation kit like this into NAS devices or going ahead and building your own NAS from scratch even down to turnkey DIY and turnkey non-DIY solutions a number of you have raised that whenever I've said a solution has DDR5 but doesn't have ECC have raised the concern that it actually does have ECC, that DDR5 has got ECC inside. And this is technically true, but it's not the same thing. Now, what we've got here on the table is some very, very primitive representations of how computing works. Here, we've got our CPU, here, we've got our memory, and here, we've got our storage. And now we're going to discuss what exactly makes the difference between ECC and on die ECC. So our first example is with ECC. What happens is, the detailed an instruction from the CPU in order to write data onto the hard drive, and I know this is caveman, we're keeping it as simple as we can. Data is instructed by the CPU to be written to the drives. It passes through the memory, and then the action is performed onto that storage media. Again, caveman oversimplification. Now, with ECC memory, the following occurs. The detail instruction and the act of data write is passed to the memory controller, which is then passed through the memory onto that drive. But during that memory controller process, the system creates a blueprint of that data. It creates a blueprint of it that lives on an additional cell on the memory module chip there, on the little PCB. As that data is passed through and just before it is written to the disk, that little blueprint that was created during the CPU to memory controller process is compared. And if the data that is about to be written to the drive contains an inconsistency, generally known as a bit flip, where one of those letters, uh, one of those has turned into from a zero to a one or a one to a zero, it will then repair that change because it doesn't compare to the original ECC blueprint there. And then when it does that reparation, it writes it to the storage. Now, how does that differ to on die ECC? Surely that's what on die ECC does. On die ECC does pretty much the same thing, but with one major difference. The CPU sends the data instruction to the memory's controller to get ready to handle it and pass it over to the storage just like before, but it doesn't create that error correcting code, that blueprint of the data during that initial process between the CPU and that of the memory controller there. It doesn't create it. What happens is with ECC, I'm sorry, uh, on die ECC on DDR5 is, it then makes sure that the data passing through the memory is correct. It makes sure that any write issue that happens on the storage, on the little NAND component chips, the flash on that memory is checked at the beginning at the end. And after that, it takes the storage uh, data uh, layout, the data set, whatever, the data breakdown in zeros and ones, the binary, and then writes it to the disk, ensuring that the pass through on that memory is correct. What's the difference? Nice and simple, if there was an inconsistency between the CPU and writing on that memory controller before it goes through here, that inconsistency won't be checked. It will just pass through the memory and the on die ECC will just go the original version and the one I'm about to write remains the same. It doesn't check that the original version has an inconsistency beforehand and that's where ECC comes into play. It makes sure that the inconsistency is noted first and repaired at the end, not when the error data arrives. Because if that happens when it's already in the system, the memory has no means to know that the inconsistency happened at that point. Now, this isn't to say that on die ECC isn't useful. It is. It's considerably more affordable than the implementation of ECC traditional, which requires the extra little flash nug nugget there on the PCB. Additionally, it requires less computing going on. It requires less power consumption and ultimately means that little tiny sodium modules have higher potential for that error correcting code internally. But there's still no avoiding that larger institutions like those of financial or those hi highly processing enormous databases 
databases at any given time. These are organizations where inconsistencies outside of the memory handling are going to be way, way, way more important because they can mean real money. Write issues within the actual flash modules on the PCB of the memory are a thing. But the point is that ECC covers both, whereas on die ECC only handles errors created within the memory, not outside of it. And that's the big difference. And particularly in a world of SSD flash, and we're seeing Gen 4 and even Gen 5 SSD flash systems, the speed of that data means that there's a lot that the CPU can get wrong during that process. And I think the memory is only half of the debate here. Now, keep in mind, this has been a very oversimplified video on purpose. I know there is more to this subject than I have described. But the fact of the matter is, when you are looking at DDR5, you are not seeing the same thing as traditional ECC, and it should never be treated as such. Enterprise users and financial institutions wouldn't treat it that way, and if your data is that important to you, nor should you. DDR5 on die ECC is a bloody useful feature, but do not use it in place of ECC if that's what you need. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this as examples and in a guide below. Going into a lot more detail about this, because there'll be users that want more detail, so do check that out. But apart from that, have yourselves a fantastic week.